Hi guys, welcome to another Learn Electronics Repair video. Uh, about two weeks ago, I made a video explaining how to take a normal multimeter and convert it into a very sensitive short circuit finder, capable of finding a short circuit to a single capacitor within a whole bank of like 15 capacitors. And I proved it worked and it works very, very well. And this modification costs like one dollar. Yeah, I published the video and I was quite surprised to see the reception this video got. Um, to date, I think it's my second most popular video. Um, I wouldn't say it went viral, but it got a huge amount of views. And it's also caused quite a bit of controversy. So today, I think I need to revisit this and look at, let's look at some of the issues people raised and I've tried to convince them in the comments that they, they're incorrect, what they believe in are common misconceptions and I've tried to prove this with Ohm's Law and I still have difficulty getting people to believe what I'm saying. So let's have a look at the video now and let's have a look at some of the comments and then let's see if we can prove yeah, not, not in theory, but in practice, whether or not the comments people were making are actually correct. So this is the video I made to convert your multimeter into an accurate short circuit tracer finder for less than one dollar. Build this DIY. And this video in from February the 28th, so this is just over two weeks, has had 62,000 views and 99 comments. And some of these comments are raising a similar thing. And this is one of them. So the guy said he's cautious about the voltage. This tester uses 4.5 volts and 50 milliamp constant current source to trace the short circuit components. And I based this on a commercial tester, actually, which I'll show you again. But this guy is one of them, one of me, he's saying he'd still be cautious about the voltage. This is the four and a half volts I'm sticking in to the circuit boards to find the short circuit. And the common thing seems to be that if you're putting that voltage into a short, that's fine. But if the short somehow opens when measuring, yeah, it somehow goes open circuit, you're now going to put the five volts nearly into a node that's designed to only take two and a half or 3.6 or why not let's talk about vcore takes 0 0.8 yeah, or 0 0.9 pecs yeah and it says uh that um some devices are very sensitive uh and basically goes on to say that um, you should set the voltage to one volt or less because at that sort of voltage you're never going to damage anything okay and he's then mentioned he does this with his power supply. So what I use is a bench power supply. Sets it, yeah. Shorts all these together just in constant current mode before he starts measuring. Okay. So that's how he's saying he does it. Um, another guy on very much the same subject. Vilveran. Four days ago. Actually sending 5 volts down a 1.8 volt line with bus of the CPU, the V-Core, yeah? As the CPU only draws power when it's actively computing and the transistors inside are switching, the power consumption is actually from switching losses. So if there's no power, say the CPU isn't running, all the internal transistors will be in a fixed state and virtually no power should flow. Unless it's a problem. If you apply excessive voltage, these transistors will present a high impedance until they break down. And this can happen before your meter even displays its first voltage. Yeah. Let alone fully settled. And we spent a long time disagreeing myself and Bill on about this. Um, but at the end of the day, himself and others on the thread, I can't convince. Uh, so this is what I want to do today. Uh, second thing about the video, and this was actually very correct, or I should say very incorrect. So, during the video, I actually drew out the circuit of the tester. And this is the circuit that I drew for the modification with the LM317 and the 22 ohm resistor. And this is correct. Yeah, voltage in on in, out on out, down to adjust. But the actual output comes from here, not here okay 
So this is the correct circuit and this is where you take the output to your test meter. However, later in the video, I then showed how to modify this so you can switch between 50 milliamps and 100 milliamps, which is what the commercial tester, the VC480, 480C plus does. Um, but unfortunately on this diagram, this is my original one, which I, I effectively interrupted and corrected in the video. And this shows the output coming from here. And this is wrong. If you connect the output from here, it will not limit current whatsoever. It will just pass the voltage and all the current available straight through. So the output comes from this point, yeah, ADJ, this leg. Now at this point in the video, I actually show this correctly, so I'm showing how to build one of these. And you can see the output wire is coming from the ADJ pin, adjust pin, yeah, and the resistor goes from out. So this was correct as well, it's just the, uh, when I referred back to show how to add an extra resistor, I did it wrong. If you want to put the extra resistor with a switch, it goes from here, through the resistor, to the switch, and back to here. So as long as you build this looking like this, it will be correct. I hope that satisfies uh, a very, very correct comment that somebody made about the diagram being wrong later in the video. Uh, so yeah, well spotted mate, you were right and I hope I have cleaned it up and corrected it there. Now let's talk about some very common misconceptions and if you are one of the people who believe this, that's fine because a lot of people believe this, yeah, and it, it kind of takes you a while to get your head around it. But basically, one of the misconceptions is that if you have a 50 milliamp constant current source, that the voltage will increase to the point at which 50 milliamps flow. So if you have something which is not drawing 50 milliamps, it will increase the voltage and continually until it reaches 50 milliamps, it's a constant current here. But that isn't true. The current that flows depends on the resistance of the load. It depends on Ohm's law, yeah? Ohm's law, V equals I R. The voltage on the meter probes will be the current times the resistance, okay? Now, let's have a look at some of the examples people said. If you connect the meter to V core, you'll blow the GPU. V core on a modern GPU could be anywhere. I've seen some as low as 0.2 ohms, and I've seen some that are maybe 4, 5 ohms, 2 ohms, that sort of re resistance. Okay. So that's the sort of resistance you have on a V core. People have another one if you connect it to a CPU, V core, you'll blow the CPU. Typically, with CPUs, a Celeron, like something like a, or an i3, that sort of processor, tends to have about 20 ohms resistance if you measure them with your multimeter. Uh, something like an i7, say like an i7 fourth generation, yeah, that will have a resistance of about 2 ohms. And I've measured them, I know what the resistance is. So let's see what happens to our 50 milliamp source and what happens, and does the voltage increase until 50 milliamps can flow? So we know this is the formula, okay, V equals IR. Okay, let's have a look at the Celeron first. This has the same resistance commonly of PEX 0.9 volt supply on the GPU. That's normally also about 20 ohms. So if we take current, which is 0 0.05 of an amp, yeah, 50 milliamps, and we multiply it by 20 ohms, you'll see that the maximum voltage can be as one. Yeah? It can't be any more than one. And the same would apply if this was PEX, yeah, one volt. That is not going to damage a PEX rail, yeah? That is not going to damage it. Let's have a look at the um, i7 processor. What's going to happen with that one? So we can, uh, let's clear this. So we can take our i7, and we know the resistance is 2 ohms. So the voltage across the meter probes, if I connect them to this rail, is 0 0.05 times 2. Yeah? 0 0.1 volts. More than safe, okay? Um, we can have a look at the typical uh, GPU core, yeah? Could be 0.2, could be 4, depends, you know, it could be something different depending on the core. But let's have a look at it and we can see. So, um, but I think you can see where this is going anyway. 
the four ohm one will be double that. You know it's going to be double that. But we're going to work it out, yeah. 0 0.05 times 4. Hmm. So that's going to give us 0 0.2 volts on the meter probe. And the GPU, this one here, is going to be extremely low on the, like something like a, a 28 or a 38 or 1080, something like that. Yeah. 0 0.2 times 0 0.05 equals 0 0.01 yeah. so you can see that the voltage at the meter probes just according to Ohm's law is going to be low it's uh, not going to damage it ok so that's that I'm sure if Ohm's law was wrong then scientists would have proved that a very very long time ago and I don't think we're going to prove today with our test that I built not only is it amazing one dollar short circuit finder it's also proved Ohm's law is wrong yeah I don't think we're going to find that okay uh, another uh, point that somebody raised was can the tester damage the device because it it supplies too much voltage until the current can limit. Well, the main answer to that one, I'd have to say, is if we take something like a GPU or a CPU, and this is cool, be cool, yeah, and we stick some voltage into here, what else is on this voltage rail? Well, I'm sure you know, there's lots and lots of capacitors, yeah? Lots of capacitors, all going to ground, yeah? And these capacitors are all discharged. So when we first apply our probe, no voltage can appear, appear here at all until the capacitors charge. Yeah. So you can't get this situation where too much current can flow before the thing can regulate the volt, the, the current. It can't happen. Yeah. So that's dispelled that theory. But as I say, I'm going to prove these limits. I'm going to take a graphics card and we're going to stick this thing on it. Yeah, I'm going to see what it does. We'll take a good working one. We'll test it first. We'll stick this on it and we'll test it afterwards. Now, this comes to another interesting point that somebody was saying, well, I just use my bench power supply. Yeah, I just use my bench power supply. To set the current to whatever I want and, and, and the voltage. Yeah. This is where you could run into trouble. And I, I just want to show you this so you've no doubt what happens with a bench power supply. Here's our bench power supply set to 4.5 volts. And I've turned the current up, it's on to maximum 5 amps. Okay. Now, you will know, I'm sure, that if you stick a voltage into an LED, more than the LED can stand and you don't put a resistor in series. So for instance, if you have five volts coming into an LED to ground, you need a resistor, maybe 470 ohms, 390 ohms, something like that, to limit the current. Otherwise the LED will just burn out. So let's see what happens if we attach our meter to this LED. So you can see that's the voltage on the meter at the moment. That's the voltage coming out of our test out of here, yeah? It drops a little bit of voltage in the regulators somebody said it was like three volts no it doesn't it drops a very small voltage uh, 0.13 of a volt in this case so we'll take our led and we'll connect one end to here and i'm not sure which is a positive i think it's this end yeah and we'll connect the other end of our meter to here is the four and a half volts going to damage the led i mean we have a 50 milliamps is quite a lot for an led yeah let's see what happens well, the LED came on normally, and it now reads 2.15 volts, 2.14 volts, yeah? So, no, it didn't damage the LED. Let's have a look now. As somebody said, well, I just use a bench power supply. So, I'll take the leads off the bench power supply, away from the voltmeter, okay? Now, what this guy is saying he would do, is he turns the current down on the supply, okay? So, I've turned the current down. I can't turn it to zero, otherwise the voltage goes to zero, okay? But I can turn the current down low, and I can now short the leads together. And I can now set my bench power supply to deliver uh, 20 milliamps, yeah? So here, here's our LED. You can see I've turned the lighting off on the microscope, just so we can see better what happens. You can see the bench power supply behind me. So let me connect the bench power supply to our LED, and let's see what it does, yeah? Well, 
it let up and it went out. And the reason it let up and it went out is because it's actually now gone short circuit. And it's gone short even though this was set to 20 milliamps. So why has that happened? Well, the reason that happened is because our bench power supply basically is adjustable voltage, adjustable current. So inside it's effectively, you can set the voltage, yeah, like a voltage regulator, and you can set the current, yeah. So you can set and limit the current. But on the output of our bench power supply inside here, there's some big capacitors, okay? And then from here, we connect our, our probes. So although you can limit the current here, when this is set to 4.5 volts and we first make the connection, this capacitor will discharge into the load. Yeah? And the current, the instantaneous current from the discharge of this capacitor will be high. And that's why the LED blew. It's not that this can't react as fast as the LM317 to limit the current. It's just that our LM317 doesn't have any capacitors after it. So that, I hope, explains why you need to be careful when you're using a bench power supply to limit current when you're working on sensitive voltage rails. Another matter I'd just like to bring up is the situation when you're using a short circuit tester and that the, the short circuit goes away. So effectively, the short circuit suddenly disappears. This is something that happens if you're injecting voltage from a power supply and you're sending several amps into the short circuit. So if, for example, it's a capacitor that's short circuit and you send four or five amps into there, it may burn out the capacitor, suddenly go open circuit, and then the full voltage in your power supply will appear in that voltage rail in the device you're working on. So this is why when you're using a bench power supply like this, you must always set the voltage to be lower or certainly no more than the voltage of that rail. So if you know that, for instance, that is a, a PEX rail, which is 0.9, you set it to 0.9. Yeah. If you don't know what it should be, set it to about 0.8 because no voltage rails are less than that, no matter what they are. Uh, so, yeah, that's true with the power supply because you're sending a lot of current in and the thing that's short could burn out. But with this, it's not true. With this, you're sending 50 milliamps in and there should be no reason why you would cause something to go open circuit that was previously short circuit. And even if you did, as I've just proven with Ohm's law, you won't send too much voltage into the device anyway. So these are the points that have been discussed in the threads for that video. I've made a very popular video. And I've been trying to convince people that this will not damage the device under test, even if it has low voltage rails. And this is no disrespect to the people who believe it would. These misconceptions can be very deeply held and it's very difficult to get rid of them. And probably the only way at the end of the day is to prove it. So I'm now going to prove with a motherboard and with a graphics card that this will not damage those sensitive voltage rails and devices on them. This is the motherboard I use for testing GPUs, the, the test rig. So, first of all, we'll just power this up. And I'll just uh, show you on the screen. There's no hard drive attached at the moment, but we'll see if it's up. We should get a BIOS screen or at least a message come up to say that there's a uh, no boot device. Please just give it one moment. Yeah. Okay, no boot, no boot device. So it's working, okay. Now let's have a look, first of all, to see where V-Core is on the processor and what the resistance is. This is a Celeron of some type, but they're quite high, this one. So I'll just go measuring from ground on Ohm's range. And because I can't get to the coils easily, I'll just go on the MOSFET. So, these are your high side and two low side MOSFETs. So this will be ground. My uh, meter's not really working very well. This one, the leads. Yeah, that's ground, okay? And this is the 12 volts. And this is V core, which reads about 30 ohms on this processor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our short circuit finder and we're going to stick our. Uh, four point however many volts it is there yeah 
let's put it somewhere where you can see it one moment okay we're now going to stick our four volts into v core okay so i've got ground onto the ground yeah v cores here so let's see what it does let's see what this actually does well it went to zero and then it went to 385 yeah 300.385 of a volt yeah the reason it went to zero is because the capacitors had to charge up the second time i do it it might not yeah 0.385 so i've put my four volts into the vehicle twice yeah and they're off measures here i've stuck four volts in there twice does this motherboard still boot up well we switch it on we'll go to the monitor we've heard it bleep yeah that's a good sign okay took a few seconds before it'll take a few seconds to get there yeah, no no boot device present so putting four volts into our cpu using this short circuit finder has not harmed it and that's quite a high resistance one yeah you'd think that well you would know that if it was a low resistance one the voltage would be really lower now let's try with the gpu with our short circuit finder this is a hd 7950 nothing amazing but it's working so it's as good a one to use as any to test with so we'll put the power on we'll swap, start this up again i don't have a hard drive attached to the machine but you, you hear it bleep and insert boot device so we know that graphics card is actually working now let's have a look see if we can find where v core is and then let's put our short circuit tester with four and a half volts into v core let's see what happens then okay here's our graphics card and we can see where v core is because we can see all the inductor coils in the row down here so we can measure this one it's got a good connection onto it and let's see what the v core actually is about 3.4 ohms yeah so it's quite a low one 3.3 ohms we can assume that v core on this is probably less than a volt yeah so once again let's take our short circuit finder with its 4.2 volts yeah, and 4.6 coming out of the bench power supply it's going up slightly and let's measure the resistance of v core with this device yeah so again i'll just get onto uh, ground connection to ground okay and then let's see what's on v core so you can see the meter in here we are here's v core what have we got well again it went to zero and then 49 millivolts the zero again is because the capacitor is charging the zero 4.94 let's do it a few more times shall we for, for good measure on this one let's go let's go on all of the inductors yeah can't get a connection on that one probably yeah i think i think we've uh subjected that into enough uh hardship now yeah with our four and a half volt tester shall we see what it does now let's just the power off on the pc put the graphics card and let's see if this is still working okay so i've got the power in it's ready to go let's switch the power supply on start it up again and does our graphics card still work after that abuse and yes it does okay so rather than all the discussion in the comments i hope that has now uh, settled the matter so as you can see nothing bad happened to our device under test um the point of this video by the way is not to prove i'm right and to prove the people who commented is wrong although i did that i will say um but the whole point of the video really is because this is such a common misconception that I needed to demonstrate that. And I'm sure a lot of you will learn from this video and hopefully understand Ohm's law is correct and Ohm's law is always correct. And we could prove on paper before we had to do this whether or not any harm was going to occur. So I uh, hope you use Ohm's law a lot more now and um, see you all soon on another video, guys. Adios amigos.